hello hello and welcome to my channel my name is danielle and i am the owner of the millie life please make sure to click on that red subscribe button below if you haven't yet subscribed i don't want you to miss out on my motorcycle videos that i post every wednesday and my exercise videos that i post every friday Today, we are taking both of those worlds and kind of combining them together. So let's go. So today, it is the middle of January. We have ice on the ground, we have snow on the ground. It is cold outside. So needless to say, I have not taken my Harley out on the road since New Year's Eve, and I'm definitely missing riding and very much missing vlogging. We're here today to talk about three things that you can do post long distance motorcycle trip to feel better the next day and to get back on the bike feeling good and also moving well. If you're moving well, if you're feeling good, you're gonna be more alert, you're gonna be safer on the bike, and you're just gonna feel better overall. Now, this isn't exclusive to riding long distances. You can do these on a regular basis. And this isn't exclusive to just motorcyclists. These are things that anybody can do at home to help you feel better and move better. What you're going to need is two lacrosse balls. You can use tennis balls, you can use golf balls, you could use apples, just anything <laughs> that is round and firm. You're also going to need a pillow, all right? Or if you have a foam roller, you can pick up one of these at Five Below, I think for like a dollar or two, or you can get them on Amazon. I'll link that below but you don't absolutely need this. Um, a pillow will work just fine. You've just gotten off the bike, you're tired, your body hurts, it's been a long day, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to grab the ball and we're gonna start with the bottom of our body and work our way up. For those of you who have not done trigger point therapy, which is just a fancy name for self-massage, this is supposed to feel intense at first. So on a 1 to 10 scale, 10 being the most intense, 1 being really, really nothing. Um, this wants to be at about a 7 or 8, but it should start to feel better as you go. The idea here is you're loosening up any knots or kinks in the muscle, but you're also getting more blood flow to the muscle. And blood flow is what brings nutrients, what brings oxygen, what takes away lactic acid, which is what causes soreness in your muscle. So a lot of really, really great benefits there, especially after a long day of riding. You're gonna take the lacrosse ball, or if you're new to this, I might start with the tennis ball, but you're gonna press down and into your calf muscle, all right? We don't wanna be on your shin bone. You wanna be in the meatier part of the muscle. And you can move the ball around until you find that trigger point, okay? Or that spot that's really, really tight. It makes you make a face like, ooh, that doesn't feel so good. You found it, good job. So you're gonna push down and in, and we're gonna go 10 tiny dime-like circles one way and 10 di tiny dime-like circles the other direction. And what we're doing here is we are working out the knots and the kinks. We're getting more blood flow to the muscle. Around seven or eight should start to feel a little bit better. The more you keep up with this and the more that you do this, the better you're going to feel. So 10 tiny circles in the opposite direction. If you feel any numbness or tingling with this, you're going to want to move the ball. But go ahead and roll that guy out. And then we'll go ahead and we'll switch sides. And you do not have to sit how I'm sitting here, right? You can have the leg out in front and push down and in, whatever is most comfortable to you. So really press down and in. And the reason I chose the calves is that first muscle um, to roll out, regardless of where your foot pegs are, if you have a more forward, mids, or further back, you're going to be constantly extending and flexing that ankle, which is moved by your calves. And that's why that guy might be tight. You're going to want to make sure that you get plenty of water after doing this. That's just going to help flush your system even more. So 10 circles one way, 
and then 10 circles the other. Awesome. So the next one we're going to do is our glutes. So you're going to take the ball, you're going to sit on the ball. All right, so the ball is underneath my left glute. I'm going to take my left ankle and I'm going to cross it over my right knee. Okay, if that's a little bit too intense, keep your foot planted. Otherwise, cross it over the knee and then you're going to rock to the outside of your hip and back towards the center of your butt, but not to the center. All right, you're gonna do that for 10. If you find a spot that's really, really tight, you can pause and kind of sit still on it or pulse on it. Your body is going to tell you what it needs, so if staying still feels great, stay there. If moving around a little bit feels great, do that. <laughs> Just listen to your body, try to see what it needs. And then when you're done there, we'll go ahead and we'll switch over to the other side. The reason I chose the glutes for the second trigger point area is being on a bike or in any seated position, your hips and your glutes are going to get very tight because they're constantly bent and contracted and then the glutes are turned off, right? You're sitting on them. So, this is a great one, especially after long rides. Um, you may just find that this is a great one for a daily basis, especially if you have a job that's more sedentary where you're sitting at a desk or if you're in school or you just don't get up and walk around much. This one is a good one. So 10 each side. The next one we're going to do is our lower back. So you're gonna need that other ball for this. Now you can leave them unattached or you can take a piece of tape and kind of tape them together. They make um, actual, they call them like peanuts. <laughs> you can find them on Amazon and I'll link it below, um, but it's actually taped together. So with this one, we're gonna do our low back. All right, so I'm gonna place the ball on either side of my spine and then just starting down low here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 10 really deep breaths. So big breath in, big breath out. And when I breathe out, I'm pushing that low back down and into the two lacrosse balls. Big breath in, big breath out. Good, we're gonna do that for 10. Again, with riding, you're leaning forward, the glutes are shut off because you're seated. So that low back tends to take quite a bit of the brunt of the work there. So rolling it out is absolutely gonna help that feel a little bit better. And again, we don't wanna be on the spine or on the nerves. So if you feel a tingling sensation, move the ball a little bit. So once you get 10 really, really deep breaths, you're gonna move the balls up about an inch or two. All right, so a little bit higher here and then we'll lay back down on the ground. All right, another 10 deep breaths. Big breath in, big breath out, really pushing that low back down and into the floor. So we'll go 10. Awesome. And then we're going to do that one more time. <laughs> There's Bueno in the middle of our back. So, same idea. Laying down. Nice deep breaths. Now, as we get further up the back, you have the option too of crossing the arms over your chest, switching which one is on top for 10. All right, or you can also just lay nice and still and take those really deep breaths.
Awesome job. And then the last one that we're going to do is our upper back. So you're gonna go back to using just one of the lacrosse balls. <clears throat> you're gonna find a spot anywhere right in here, all right? And you're gonna place the ball there. Knees are gonna stay bent. That just helps take some pressure off of our low back. All right, so you're gonna place the ball there, again, off of the spine. You're gonna reach your thumb and try to touch the floor behind you, and then pinky to your hips. All right, key word there is try. If you don't have that range of motion yet, that's okay. Don't push it, and just go wherever your range of motion is. If that's right here, go right there. Work with your body. So this one, is always tight. I don't think I've met anybody who doesn't carry tension um, or have some tightness up through here. Um, so much of what we do as motorcyclists is, is in front, right? So that muscle is constantly being overstretched. Um, and then that goes for most of our um, activities of daily life, right? So uh, being on the computer, being on your cell phone, driving a car, riding a motorcycle, all those things are forward. So that muscle is going to be tight and gonna need some TLC. Go ahead and switch sides. You've got 10 of these. Um, but this is also where a lot of people carry stress. So especially after a long motorcycle ride or even a long day, coming back off of the bike and doing this one, Feels fantastic. I promise I'm not trying to hurt you. I promise this will eventually start to feel better. And like I said at the beginning, if the lacrosse ball or the golf ball is too intense, go for more of like a tennis ball, something that's not as dense. All right, and then once we get 10, we'll go ahead and come on up. The great thing about this too is on a motorcycle, on a bike, you don't have a ton of storage space. Even if you do have like a bagger, you're not trying to bring a bunch of stuff with you. This is tiny, right? I could put this in my pocket and call it a day. <laughs> so bring that with you. I tell all my clients to attach it to something that you do every day. So for everybody that's waking up in the morning or going to bed at night, if you're a morning person, add it to that routine. If you're a night owl, Add it to that routine. And you don't have to do all of those. Pick and choose two that feel really sore, really tight. And those are, you're going to see a lot of benefit from that. You're going to have increased range of motion. So you'll be able to move your body a little bit further, a little bit more. You're going to feel more relaxed. And you're just going to feel better overall. So check those out, try them out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And then I'm gonna show you three stretches that you can pair with that, especially after a longer motorcycle ride. So the first stretch is going to be our three-way hip. So you're gonna be in a half kneeling position. You're gonna squeeze your butt and push your hip forward. And then at the same time, you're gonna reach your arm up and over towards your other ear. You're gonna hold for five seconds, come back to the center. We'll go out to the side, same thing. Back to the center, all the way out to the back, and back to the center. Good. Back to the front, back to the side, and back to the back. All right, my knee is following my toe and my toe is pointing in the direction where, where I'm um, going. So if it's to the side, my toe's out to the side. If it's more to the back, out to the back. And we'll switch sides. The hand over the head, that creates room for those muscles to stretch. Squeezing your butt. So when you squeeze one muscle, um, the one in front can lengthen, right? So if I tighten up my hip, my glute can lengthen. The body works that way from the front to the back and the back to the front. And with being on the bike and being seated, your hips are constantly flexed. So those are going to be tight. 
And then the second one, you're gonna grab the pillow. You can also use a foam roller here, All right? You're gonna fold this in half. You're gonna straighten your bottom leg and you're gonna hug the pillow. Now I'm gonna keep my hips facing the pillow and I'm gonna bring my hands together and then open up away, come back together, open up away. So I'm trying to twist my torso up towards the ceiling as I reach that arm back. You're gonna to wanna to do five of those. Good. Keeping those hips forward, really squeezing the pillow as you do this. And then we'll go ahead and we'll switch sides. So now you can also use a foam roller if you have one for this, but that's not super conducive um, to longer distance motorcycle trips. But I will show you guys anyways, just in case you're doing this at home. So reaching back, see how my hips stay square? I don't want them to roll back with me, right? That's the purpose of the foam roller or the pillow. You can also do this one for an ISO hold, so just holding here for 30 seconds to a minute. Um, and then the last one I'm going to show you is going to be hamstring kicks, okay? So again, being seated all day long, right? Those hamstrings are shortened, and so it feels really nice to stretch them out along with the fact that that will help the hips um, and that low back feel better as well. So you're gonna straighten this left leg and then you're gonna pull the right leg in and extend the leg up towards the ceiling and then back down. We're gonna do that for 10 repetitions. Now I don't need to pull my leg super far in to do this. You are listening to your body Wherever you can straighten it, that's where you're keeping it. Now, if this one is just, it's too hard to hold the leg up, you can also just prop your leg up onto a wall and let that guy stretch, or even a couch. Notice my other leg, I'm keeping that toe nice and flexed, and I'm squeezing the front of my leg, just like we talked about with the hips, to allow the hamstring to lengthen. And then the last um, little thing I'll demonstrate is having that leg up here. And you can use that for a hamstring stretch if you're super, super tight or even a wall, okay? So those are four trigger point exercises that you can do after a long ride or just a normal day of riding. And three stretches that you can throw in there as well. Uh, leave your favorite one below. Please try them out at least once. I promise they will help you to feel better and to move better. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Um, please make sure to hit that subscribe button before you head out. And I'll see you guys real soon.